that have recently released two comics, Hiru, um, and we'll get to talking all about him in a moment. But um, first, let's talk about you. Um, you have an interesting story, um, origin mm -hmm. story, if you want to say that. Um, <laughs> would you mind sharing that with us and telling us a little bit about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically, I'm from London, England, um, born in London, was raised here, um, uh, uh, raised in a single parent household with mum. Um, and I started out in the church, actually, and kind of got, you know, the degree in theology and was doing that whole thing, um, went into the pulpit for a little while, and then kind of got this, I don't know what the word is, but I suppose I just, uh, it didn't make sense to me anymore. I, yeah. let's, let's, let's call it that. And kind of went down a bit of a, went down a bit of a, an interesting path, got involved in crime um, and ended up in prison. And um, I was in a supermax prison here for a year, um, Belmarsh Prison on, um, uh, for possession of a firearm. Um, and then, and so I was, I was sentenced to six and a half years and in the UK, when you're sentenced, you do sort of half that time. So I did three years, three months, and then the rest you do um, on what they call probation, where, you know, you sort of check in and stuff. And it was actually in prison where I so sort of started really, I mean, I've always been into script writing and that type of thing, but you've got a lot of time on your hands and a lot of time to think. <laughs> and so, yeah, perfect time to like, it's a bit like quarantine, perfect time to start writing, you know. And so I started kind of penning um, Heru there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Yeah, I mean, that you use that time to do yes, something. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> That part is awesome. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Um, so, do you, have you always been a lover of comics? Always. Um, I think um, I could, my, 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 my first comic was around seven years old, eight years old. Um, and I remember just seeing a copy of The Mighty Thor on um, a, a news agent, like a newsstand um, near my church actually. And I remember just harassing my mum to buy it for me, you know, and it was actually um, number 330, 40. Oh, wow. you, you remember yeah. the issue? Yeah, because awesome. he fights a guy called the Crusader. <laughs> I just remember that. I remember that front cover and I remember thinking, I, I just wanted that, you know. Um, and again, I think it was to do with being in church and seeing that cross and just right. that imagery, you know, and, and ever since then, I've been just, you know, the lover of comics, Thor in particular, um, but yeah, Superman, and you know, it kind of spreads out after that, but yeah, so, so I've been sort of like seven, eight years old around that sort of time. That's awesome. So are you reading comics now, other than your own? What are you reading? Yeah, 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 still reading, um, still reading Thor, so I'm now looking, you know, looking at Thor, Herald of Galactus at the moment, and, and you know, King Thor, with these new powers and stuff. Um, I, I, do you know what, though? I tend to read a lot of the older stuff as well. It's only if friends tell me about the new stuff yeah, that yeah, I kind of get involved. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, um, I read a thing recently, and, and uh, you know, The Boys, yeah, had like a TV series. So then I went back and started reading those comics, and then yep. um, there was not. In, it's not indestructible. What's, what's the, there's another. There was another one that I read, sort of um, another indie one, which is you know got this kind of rogue Superman character, and nice. um, so yeah, I kind of get involved like that. But I'm still old school with it. I'm still Silver Surfer days. You know, I'm, I'm still, I'm nice. still old school. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So what inspires you about comics and what inspired you ultimately to take that love of comics and create your own? Do you know what? I think uh, initially, um, uh, why, and I think why I, I, I really uh, gravitated to Thor was I was in church. I've grown up in church all my life, you know, church every day, Sunday school. And we used to read the King James version of the Bible, which is very thou, thee, thy, mm -hmm. and, and all of that. And Thor spoke like that. And so I think there was some sort of connection there with that, that, that sound, that way of speaking I, that I really liked. And I just, I really loved the, the, you know, the stories, the ideas of heroes, you know, I think, they, I think they kind of represent the better us ultimately, you know, and I think, you know, and give us that thing to strive for. So I think that's really the inspiration um, um, for me. And, and it was a way of escape as well, man. Like, you know, we grew up in the projects, what you guys would call the projects, we call it the estates. And um, it was just like, you know, it was, it was literally cars, drop police cars, sirens, and that sort of thing. And in the comic book world, it was brilliant. You know, the bad guys lost the good. It's how it's supposed to be. The right, good guys yeah. win, the bad guys <laughs> <laughs> You know, this is how it's supposed to be. So, um, so I think it was that escapism as well. And, and I've always enjoyed that, whether it's been in TV or whatever. I've always loved that. 
Nice. Very cool. So let's break down Hiru a little bit. Um, to tell us about him, tell us about the story so far and maybe what's coming next. Okay, so Hiru is a, it's a five part series. So we're on, I've just th finished um, book three. So nice. the, um, one and two are out, book three is done. And it's basically the story of, it was just me asking the question. So um, uh, Marvel have a really great um, uh, uh, title, What If? Yep. Yeah, yeah. What if this? What if Rogue and not Rogue? What if um, Storm had took over Asgard? What if this? And so for me, it was a what if uh, during slavery, during slavery, there was a Superman. You know, what what yeah. if we had a Superman during slavery? It was just asking that question and then trying to answer it, thinking what would the world be like now? You know, and so I kind of went back and thought, you know, let's let's do it and let's do it in a way that um, so uh, the the Greek god Horus is the Egyptian deity Heru, the same deity, just different names. Yep. And so I thought, and my study showed that the word Heru and Hero are the same root. So Egyptian influences, um, I think it's Greek, Greek influenced by Roman, Roman, Latin, Latin, English, we get to Hero. Yeah. And so for me, it was like, wow, that's, that's cool. So, you know, the first Hero is Heru. And yeah. basically how I've kind of built that was this guy kind of, you know, in a, in a situation, he's in pre-Civil War America, he's, he's on a plantation and it's basically having suffering lots of abuse. What, would, what does he do with that power? Because with great power comes great responsibility. Right. And so it was kind of trying to tell the story and not trying to use it as a, a revenge tool. Yeah, let's start killing white people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which most people see the front cover or see the tagline, what if during slavery we had a Superman? And that's the assumption that they make straight away. Mm. Um, and so it's kind of, but that's not the hero's way. And I think it is yeah. important to try and still stick within the frameworks of what is the hero's way. So I think, and I also love the fact that Superman, you know, Superman and Captain America both fought Nazis. You know, so yeah. it was that idea of injecting a little bit of history with a little bit of, you know, fiction and fantasy and superhero dumb and seeing kind of what will come up. And yeah, and, and that was Born Heru. That's awesome. I've, I've read both issues so far. I've loved them. Um, and I, I'm not going to give anything away, but I love the tension he has right now between doing what he feels he needs to do and yep. versus what he's maybe being called to do. So yes. uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> So why I'm okay. So let's be, be frank. Um, you're not from America. <laughs> we yeah, can tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why set your story in pre-Civil War uh, America? So um, if when you read Harry's fact file, he's actually from Jamaica originally. Right. So that's where he was born on a plantation in Jamaica. So, you know, the British were, you know, very involved in the slave trade and the British were very in the islands mainly though. So mm -hmm. the British have kind of, that Britain never gets a bad name in for the slave trade in the same way that America does, even though they were just as involved. But it's because Britain did all of their slavery on the islands, not on the mainland. Right. And so you haven't got that same energy, whereas American slavery took place on the mainland. And so I kind of wanted to link the two um, world. So I wanted to link the fact that it was all one community, this kind of slave owning families, that it was all one thing. Um, and also, um, America's got, um, from a business perspective, America's got a bigger marketplace. Um, you know, in the UK, there is a population of 68 million people. And out of that, only 1.2 million are African, Black, mm. um, Afro-Caribbean, whereas America's more like 35 million upwards, probably even more than that, um, yeah. African-Americans. And so there was that whole thing. And again, I've got, um, America's done such a fantastic job of exporting her culture. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of the slave trade, you instantly think of roots or 12 years a slave or, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. And I think um, part of the thing I wanted to do as well was bring together genres. Um, America loves slave movies. And strangely enough, in particular, black Americans, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> and, <laughs> and America also loves superheroes. So why not bring these things together, you know? And I just don't think it would have worked um, in the islands, uh, in Jamaica or so on and so forth. And it wouldn't have been realistic in the UK on, on the, you know, in mainland England. So America was the best choice. 
Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Perfect yeah. sense. So speaking of a black audience, um, I would say, at least um, the opinion of a white guy here, <laughs> that mm -hmm. you're part of a resurgence of black indie comics right now. Um, if yes. you're looking everywhere, there's all these new black owned, black created, black drawn titles coming out and it's awesome. Um, yeah. Do you have any other indie titles that you're following in that genre right now? Yes, absolutely, I do. Um, oh, there's so many at the moment. And it's the funny thing is, you know, the in Instagram and these social media things have just changed. I, I, I was like, what, other people are doing this? You know, I thought it was, I thought it was only me. <laughs> I had this idea, god damn it, but it's brilliant. Um, so there's these guys called Concrete Comics with a K. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they do The Absolver, they do uh, Adina uh, uh, the Baddest, and they do um, Acolyte. Um, yeah. So I'm loving their stuff at the moment. Um, there's another uh, guys that out there, in, I think they're from New York, um, Webway Comics, mm -hmm. and they do this thing called It's Nana. Um, and yeah. it's Nana is like a take on the a Nancy story. The wear spider, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I love it. The wear spider, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So yeah, those guys as well, I'm finding them pretty cool. Uh, the guys that did Black as well, which was, yeah. you know, the only thing I didn't like about Black was I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of black and white comic books, personally. Right. Yeah. You know, I like colour books. I like those kind of vibrant colours. Yeah. And um, uh, back in the day, in the 90s, 1993, there was, um, uh, oh, what are they called? Uh, they did Heru as well. They did Heru. They did yeah. Her. The Association of African uh, Comic Publishers. Yeah, uh, Ania. Uh, there uh, you yeah, go. yeah. Yes, yeah. Ania. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Well, um, I just managed to track down one of those guys that were involved in that. The guy that did Purge. Really. And he, Yes, and he he's, brings... he's republishing right now. I just yeah. got his latest books. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So um, yeah, so I've kind of just got involved with him as well and trying to get that stuff because um, you that's know, awesome. Yeah, brilliant. sounds like our read pile is basically the same right now. Like we're yeah. reading the same stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy, man. So yeah, it's, it's it's a brilliant time. It really is. Yeah. Have you read any of the Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer? No, but I've seen those and I'm trying to get my hands on some of those. Because the problem that I have is um, getting them shipped here is yeah. so expensive. You yeah. know, it's like sometimes more than the, the, the comic book itself yeah. to get it shipped. Yeah. So that's the only struggle that I'm having. But, um, but I have seen those and those, those are looking cool. Any good? Yeah, yeah, they're great. And, and I'm secretly hoping for someday a Hero and uh, Harriet Tubman crossover. So just mm. keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Let's put it out there. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> All right, so you you are having, um, I would say, success. I'm I'm seeing you kind of start to pop up everywhere on Instagram with with oh. the titles. Um, you have an audio book that just came out of the hero titles. Um, what advice would you give others who are wanting to get into the indie comic industry? Um, I think the first thing is I always say start by starting. You know, a lot of the time what we end up doing is talking about what we're going to do. You know, and I'm going to do this, and and it's always down the road somewhere. And I think just get on with it. You know, there's a lot of guys out there that are writers and they think, oh, I can't draw. I'm not very good at drawing. So I can't draw, you know. I literally, when I, when I came home, I bought um, How to Draw Comics by Stan, the Marvel way, by Stan yeah. Yeah. and Jack Kirby. Yeah. And I sat down and just worked on the shapes, you know, just to kind of get my rough, uh, my rough storyboard together. And then you bring in a, a better drawer, you know, you bring in an illustrator, you bring in a colorist to, to kind of be, um, do your stuff. So I think just don't let those little obstacles get in the way. And also when you're budgeting on the business side of it, make sure that if you're putting, if your book's going to cost you $10,000 to bring to print, to get a finished job, make sure you've got another $10,000 to do your marketing and advertising. Because what we as independents always do is we spend every penny we've got on getting the product done. And then we've got an amazing product, but we've got no money left to market. No one ever hears about it. You know, we sort of try and sell it to our friends and family and realize that when all of them have bought it, we've only made a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think, I, think I, I thought I had more friends in the family, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's so, so I think that's one of the big trip ups, you know, in all honesty is that the marketing and, you know, the creativity is always there, but the yeah. taking it as a business, because, you know, it is a business, you know, and, and it has to be treated as such. And I think for me, that's kind of been the, the, the biggest struggle because I've got all these great ideas. And now it's like, now you need to figure a way of getting them to market and getting them in front of people. So I'm yeah. glad that, you know, things like this let me know, okay, it's actually starting to work, you know, yeah. that, um, yeah, that we're getting it out there. That's awesome. That's awesome. So tell people where they can find your work at. How, how if they want to buy a copy or get the audiobook, where do they do that? 
So um, website, www.herucomics.com. Boom. Just nice and simple. <laughs> um, we're on Instagram as jbeon, J-B-E-O-N underscore comics. Um, and that's me there. So if you holler, you know, I respond. I might not be do it straight away, but I will get back to people. I always respond. Um, so yeah, you know, and always up to collabing. I'm always looking for artists and so on and so forth. So yeah, no doubt, man. Just holler at me. That's awesome. Well, everybody, you heard him. You can go grab his comics right now and download them like I did and read them right now. Um, they're great. And I encourage you to grab, grab your copies of Hero and um, follow Jason on Instagram and all his other channels. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for being here again. Oh, 